abrupt change. It was a very good fade out. Hi, Tim. Hi there, gentle there. So this is my quad at home, episode 22. This is, we haven't done one for a while because we've been working on um, other things, mainly a, an IO game, which we had a kind of um, um, a funded to, to produce. So we spent the last month creating that and we're just about to launch it. When we launch it, we'll do a show We'll introduce it as part of this Micworld um, show, so you can have a go to that. But it's on a completely separate website, and it's a bit, it's a bit different from the stuff that we usually do. It's a, it's a game, relaxing, contemplative game. But this is um, a new episode um, because we've been given an offer to deliver some workshops at the Margate School, which is in Margate on the High Street. Um, so we're doing a five-week course. Um, an evening course for adults um, on creative coding, which is what we always do, but we thought to give it an angle, we picked a particular topic, and the topic we picked is swarm art, swarm coding, creating swarms with code. So if you can put it on all, all four screens, Nicola, you can... Um, actually, the, the blue stuff behind me is a, a swarm of jellyfish. It certainly is. Do jellyfish swarm, Nicola? Yes. We'll have a discussion about this in a minute. They do? You sure in they fact, do? they are called the plague. Or a I know plague. there's a lot of them doing stuff in a group. A plague of jellyfish. You okay. have a plague of rats, yeah. and you have a plague of jellyfish. And I think you have a plague of, what else would it be? If it's rats, jellyfish. Frogs. Certainly not whales. Um, so this is Swarm part, part one. We haven't really, but we haven't um, promoted this show at all. It's just a sort of pop-up show. For, it's for us really to experiment with um, how we're going to deliver this workshop, which is in about a month's time. So we need to kind of figure out some, we've got bits and pieces that are relate to swans, and we're gonna create some new pieces, obviously, and we're just gonna talk about what's, what swarm art could be. Um, and this is quite a big topic, swarm, swarm art, swarm behavior. How long have you been interested in swarms? Well, swarm, swarm, swarm behavior, Swarms are part of a subject called artificial life, which I've been interested in for decades. Um, I haven't particularly focused on looking at swarms. Loads of other people have. And, um, and in particular, um, Hollywood has. I mean, there are huge swarm effects in many, many films. So yeah, each, each, Bird or whatever it is is changing its behaviour based on what its neighbours are doing, and it does this in three different ways. Which are these three? Not th no, that one. Attraction, repulsion, and orientation. <laughs> it's quite interesting. Every time I press it, it kind mm. of kills everything off. Mm. Okay, attraction. So. Well, let's deal with repulsion first because that's um, easier. If it gets too close to any of its neighbours, it moves away from the neighbours. So if you look closely on wall three, you can see that they're, they're fairly well spread out. They, they needn't be. If I put it back onto, if I take it off swarm, if I turn swarm off, and these are just dots now. Well, actually, they're all going in the same direction. Let's make, let's give them a bit of a randomness and let them go through. Can you make them a little bit bigger as well, maybe? Yeah. Just a little. Just like firework contrails or something. Make it a bit faster as well. So you can see they're just going higgledy piggledy anywhere. Sometimes they cross over each other, clumping. Let's get swarm on. So it looks a mess at first. Well, actually, it's quite a mess because you've got wiggle on really. It's right. like roots. So I've got I've got these variables here: angle, separation, that is alignment and cohesion. And these three variables I can change, which will change the way that this swarm behaves. So. 
Apparently all three of these are zero. So these are basically just rounding in one, going in random directions. They're not very together, are they? Would you say, Nicola? Not no. I, well, I don't think I would assume that they were... That doesn't look like no. a swarm. It looks like loads of stuff yeah. going around. But So if I take turn separation now, this is the how much they want don't want to be near their neighbours. So if we turn this up, should start to see that they've they've organised themselves. I haven't told them all to go right to left. They're just keeping a, a distance away from each other, and because of that, they've created this overall it's emergent like behaviour. Like so there are some which are going in the wrong direction, but they kind of get bump into the neighbours and get pushed back on on course. So they look like they're all yeah. Well, because it looks like that. It looks like a sea, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, can I just say that, uh, you know, our um, maggots program? Yeah. You know, so like we just have that sort of tiling effect of maggots. Yeah. You could actually do it with this. Well, you could, you but could I mean, the like reason we do that tiling effect is because it's, 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 um, it's quicker to calculate. Yeah. You think this would be too much to have behind? Uh, I mean, the thing is, that was a really early program, and, and processing. The computers were quite slow back then, so th these computers are much faster now, so mm. I haven't run maggots for a while, but mm. yeah, maggots should be more like this, so they're... Mm. We did Shorter a trails, yeah. segmented, and just wiggling, but aware of each other. If I make these fat, the size doesn't affect the... Um, yeah, look at that. Look at the, um, look at the camera over here, so it gives you a better impression of it. Yeah, I mean, it does look quite like maggots, doesn't it? They need to be shorter to be and really go backwards and forwards, not not actually go on a journey. So more of a wriggle. Yeah, so because maggots tend to just cluster, don't they? Because they're yeah. eating something. So actually, the wiggleness can override anything because the wiggleness is just, it's just randomness. So it just puts them in a random direction. So they are trying to keep away from their neighbours, but because of the there's so much randomness going on, it doesn't doesn't do them that well. It doesn't. So you've turned randomness off now, and now they all kind of get into synchronisation, going left to right. So that's just with that's just with one force, which is the separation. So I'm going to drop the separation quite low. I'm going to make it a bit smaller again. Touch smaller, touch slower as well. Okay, so then so that's separation. That's one force. That's keeping them apart. Then. If, they, if that's all they did, keep apart, then the whole swarm would just spread apart and it would, wouldn't be a swarm because they've all wandered off in random directions. So you also have, the, have to have the opposite force, which brings them, brings them together. And this is called the alignment force, or cohesion force, or attraction, or whatever. So I can turn up the alignment force. So we've got, I'll turn it down to zero. You can see that broadly they're all sort of keeping the distance separate from each other, roughly all going right to left. Let's put alignment up. Mm. Now you see that now you see they're starting to form clumpings. Mm. And the longer it goes, and the more if I turn that force up more. So now this is like hair or something, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like roots or something like that. Mm. But what's interesting, you can see at the top there, if I take if you took the trail off, you've actually got these kind of V-shaped formations bursting out from top to the top. Yeah. One in the lead, then a few behind it, then yeah. more and more. Like, yeah. A like little it. bit like V-shaped geese flying in the sky sort of thing. Mm, like, look at it, it's beautiful. It is cool, it's well cool, isn't it? It looks good in flat 3D, doesn't it? I mean, if you imagined someone, you know, like a time-lapse film of something growing, you know, this will be Plants great for the promotion of the course. Yeah. Okay, and then the third force is cohesion. And the way uh, everyone does these forces differently, of course, or the way things happen. But the way I've done it, it keeps them in even tighter kind of clumps. So now they're much closer together. I take it off. See the spread out. Push cohesion up. So you could actually have those controls attached to someone so that when they move through the space they trigger, they yeah. change the variables so that it would actually change the behaviour of the school. Absolutely. 
I think it's fascinating just to watch it. It's yeah. really kind of calming just watching it and see where they go. Yeah. So different species have different, um, effectively, they have different kind of parameters, uh, different sort of strengths. So a swarm of mosquitoes will keep in a very loose clump, but it will get clump. So they've got they haven't got strong alignment forces, but they've got strong separation forces, I suppose. But a swarm of fish could have a very they like to be very close next to each other. This fish, and they're all going in the same direction, forming a shoal, yeah. shoal type thing. So. Well, I think, and that brings up the other thing that I find interesting about the patterns that are made in swarms is how they are meteorologi meteorological. So um, if you see footage of fish, supposedly, you know, their defense against sharks, shark attack, they will form these maelstroms that look like uh, tornadoes or something like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, you can imagine swallows on a distance or starlings forming these swarms will look like a cloud, a dark cloud, a uh, very, you know, active one, but that they, so there is this connection with weather patterns or, or behaviours as well. Well, I think that's because swarm, swarm type patterns also resulted from some natural processes, like you said, a tornado mm. is to explain it. It's not it's not a swarm, but that you can create particular three-dimensional <laughs> objects with physical forces, vortexes and so forth, that do look very similar to, yeah, swarms of fish. Well I'll have to look, have to look that up because that's a good question, isn't it? That? Does a swarm have to have something sentient as part of it? When you get swarms of robots, you know, things like that. Well, it's a good point. I'm leaving The Invincible by Len. <laughs> and you get to Len. It starts off, well, it starts off with this, you're thinking it's it's a rain cloud, and then you're thinking it's insects, and then actually what it is, is tiny, very simple robots, that there's no central brain, it's this, it's very much what you've been describing, and it was to do with conserving energy, so that the big robots, sophisticated, brainy robots, whatever, needed too much energy, so mm. they couldn't possibly survive on this dying... You know, well, yeah, the, the matter planet. of scale is really interesting, isn't it? Because yeah. there are similar processes at huge scales, universes, yeah. Yeah, or tiny fractal. scales. In a way, yeah, I guess we're talking about fractals, aren't we? But motion. Yeah, so these are mathematical patterns that did occur again and again in nature at vastly different scales. And speeds. And speeds, because, yeah, that's what actually, what, another reason why we've not done, um, well, not another reason, we've got an allotment in the last week or so, Yay. so we've been um, digging away. Yeah, make that green, um, let's have a green field. Because well, actually, what I was going to do is I did bring some other creatures today, not just, oh. um, I wanted to look at coral. Oh, okay. So what you wanted to do, Nicola, it's getting a coral. Now, how does coral work? I can't quite remember. I'm going to make it green. So, oh, green. Yeah, because I do. So, have I got green coral? How does coral work? It picks what up a colour from yeah. the webcam it's looking at and drops that as coral. And what you have to do is you draw a note, you draw a blob. So, how did you get green then? Oh, yeah, I see. I see. So, I need some. Oh, ah, you've got to turn swarm off though. Oh, it's not going to, yeah. You know, swarm is going to fight against the coral. Okay, so. Should I turn dots off? It doesn't matter. You can turn the, leave the dots on, but turn the swarm off. So click okay. dots rather than swarm. So and then, how did you get green? You chose. Go to notes, and then oh, just okay. you've got an RGB in there. Oh look at that! That's nice. The dots are now following. They're not swarming anymore. They're following the green trails that each other they were each leaving. The trails are fading out because. Okay, and so then. I wonder if coral. I don't think coral work each other because look, if I draw a base. No. It disappears. And this is because the background is being drawn? It's because for the swarms I've got that fading away yeah. effect. Which is lovely. Oh well. I was I was going to plant a little seed at the bottom. Uh, 
before at the beginning yeah. of the show and I'm watching grow over two hours because it's like yeah. a plant. But have you got an alpha on swan or on dots? Have you got an alpha on the background? Yeah, we can the alpha come in off? Um, might that work? Well, I, yeah, I think the way I coded it, it's going to remove anything on the BG layer. And the BG layer also happens to be where notes are drawn. Yeah, but this is slower, isn't it? Or maybe not. It looks a bit slower. No, it's okay. fading. Alright, so that, that That's right. won't work. Look at mine. Uh, <laughs> meteor showers. So one thing we... Let's get some colour on mine. This is camera two, so I'm looking at the red. So why is the screen not red? I've got, I've got video on. Let's get video on. That's good. Uh, uh, well, I've introduced mine as well, sorry. Will work, of course, we know bubbles is what I want to look at. Bubbles. Wow. I just put my swarm on. Is that yours? Yeah. Oh. Ah. Oh, I think you've, I've seen this one before. Of course you have, yeah. So, yeah, again. Is that, a, is that a swarm? Is a necessary definition of a swarm? And that's nice. So, look at that. They've got a hole in the middle. It's a necessary definition of your swarm that, that it has to get information from its neighbours because this particle system we've got here has got an, I don't think they're aff the particles aren't affecting each other, are they? They're just being moved by the. Let's get yeah, up onto. Forces. It's quite hard to see. Is there any way yeah, you can make this bigger? I can just make this darker. I've got very little control over it, but I can see. Well, I'll, I'll just turn the video off on this one. That's better. Yeah, so you can see all these wispy white lines also look like swarm effects. And this is actually, so this is um, so how is that working? hacked from a wave simulation. So looking down onto the sea uh, type thing. So when I press here, it resets it, and unfortunately resets it to, I don't know why I've got it resetting to blooming um, blue. So what are the options that you have in there? Can you make the dots any bigger? I can now, obviously, this is an early one. I was trying to find the... Um, can you make it white then? Because the white's very visible. Yeah. But it's not very visible. No, I, yeah. So. Okay, leave that. That's good. So you, that starts off, it starts off kind of homogenous. And then where do these waves come from? Is that, is it, is it I noise? I think it's a combination of attraction and repulsion. You're saying well, it does. It does have noise in it, okay? It does have, no, yeah. So with that would might be a differentiator between being a swarm and it just being noise. So but it's it's like you were describing with your dots, you've got a little bit of random. So yeah. noise is a more natural looking random, isn't it? And then you've got a little bit of attraction and then a bit of repulsion. Yes. And it's trying to find that balance. But what I think is really interesting for programming is that they generate something that looks Natural. It does, yeah. It, it looks also like a swarm, doesn't it? Sort of. Yeah. Although but it's not you going. Know, you could imagine looking down on. So, think talking about lens. It looks so like liquid. Yeah. It's, 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 it's meant to be a simulator, a simulation of the sea. But yeah, so you know, Solaris. So I have, I have, and the way those I think are done is that underneath, underneath the screen, you have um, a kind of series of vectors which do look at each other and change each other. Do you want to have a look at the code? Not in, no, not in particular, but I will, I will before the workshops, yes, because actually it's maybe an easier way of doing it. No, I can't I imagine it is. It's quite hard. I so. But I think that you would, if we could, or you could simplify it uh, because it is using noise. One of the big challenges we've got is to, 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 um, to teach people how to code swarms, you really need to get into some vector mathematics, Can you do, oh, vector mathematics okay. or, or certainly angle, cos and trigonometry, which is always something everybody hates and 
can never understand. It's quite a hard one to teach. So you can kind of black box that part of it. But I'm trying to kind of find the simplest way to because actually you don't, you don't necessarily need to know about angles, you could just say I'm going in this direction, if there's someone over here, turn away or go towards them, stuff like that, simplify. I, I want to talk about these purple lines actually, because this is, okay. we've never had this before, this is amazing. Right, so one is leaving a trail and the other is following it, so why is that? Well that is how the dots are supposed to behave, they're supposed to move faster on their own colour, their own background colour, which in this case is a kind of purple. Yeah. But we've never, because I've got this fading out, because it's part of the swarm, the purple tracks are fading, the end of them is fading away. Yeah. You're just trying which, to get it captured on this swarm as well. Right. And because the end of a trail is fading away, more dots get trapped on this trail, but occasionally this trail um, doubles back on itself or finds another bit of purple and then you get this little amazing little loop, loop forming, which, which is another sort of way see there's one there, that lot just joined into that one yeah. and then that's joined into that one. So one of the, one of the really interesting things I've read about in um, there's various books on swarms, smart swarms and so on. One of the really... Because um, you were talking before about these kind of tornado shapes that fish yeah. make, and they make yeah. hourglass shapes as well. And, um, yeah. They make anything weird shapes to confuse the predators, I suppose. But one of them that I've read that they often end up in is a donut. So they just end up going around in a big circle because the front of the swarm finds the end of the swarm. Joint onto it. I don't know. This is, I don't think this is an anti-predatory one, but this has certainly been observed in nature, and certainly in fish tanks when they um, where there's less space to move around in. And I'm sort of fascinated by how these purple things sometimes they are hooking back on their own. They're creating little close loops. So, do you want to try and recreate this on mine? Can you? Uh, I would just put the swarm on. It's simple. It was all it was. It does it. Oh, well, you, I know. You need to see roughly what my. Yeah. I'm not, I don't think it's even a swarm, is it? It's, this is just dots. Okay. So let's see if I can get some. I've got there. full angle. I've got full alignment. And we've got half cohesion and a small wiggle. Small wiggle as well. You can put the wiggle up maybe. Oh, yeah. but saying that, now they've changed their behaviour. <laughs> Um, no, some of them are joining in again. So okay. mine, mine aren't really. So it takes a while, I think. When we always think they're all going. The green in. ones. Trial. Maybe you need to click swarm on and then it off again or something. I'm not sure. Maybe I've not quite coded it properly. But it's click some and then click back on dots. Why not? Because why can't... Oh, it's because I've got the alpha zone, that's right, yeah. Okay, click so... Click on dots. That's just the default behaviour. And trail, yeah? Just trails on, isn't it? And free, you need free, I'm definitely... Ah. That's what you've got. And donut? No, don't... <laughs> don't. Can I take that off? Donut, don't let them get stuck on the edges. Yeah. Oh, okay, so then I should have donut on, should I? Yes, you want donut on. So yeah, we're going to spend the next few weeks um, trying to simplify how you teach swarms. I mean, some people in the class possibly will have some maps so they can go off, but we have to kind of separate off various bits of code for those who want it or don't want it. And you can create some very interesting effects because, and what I'm, I'm just going to worry about the mechanics of it, but Nicola's going to take this basic mechanic the dots mechanic and start figuring out how to render them in more interesting ways so adding in graphics and changing the type of way it appears because there's no reason they have to be tiny little dots they could be huge dots or they could be connected dots or anything um, there's a nice loop appeared on screen too though look at that it's lovely it's really good isn't it
When they do that, you think they should come in, they should build, they should build something. Mine's not really doing anything. But Yours isn't doing it. Maybe you haven't got the right amount of wiggle or something. Mm -hmm. or Go back to yours and let's have a bigger wiggle. So you've got wiggle full on. So oh, wiggle's full on. So let's, oh no, I've got wiggle full on. So Sorry. speed is, I've got to go six. Let's do it exactly. Yours was 33. 0.33, 0.18. I can't see the next one is the next one. 0 0.28, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Yeah, they're starting to do it. They're a bit slow, but it gives them a bit faster. There you go, you've got some little nice little loops okay, down there. Look at that, there's a tiny little circle down the bottom there, you can see it. Yeah, you can see them in on these things, can't you? <laughs> so they look, yeah, this looks like ringworm, if you've ever seen ringworm. Ringworm's a skin infection. It's not actually a worm, but it's called ringworm because it looks no, but because it actually like it's this. a fungal infection that looks like nature, and yeah. these are digital, looking like ringworm, <laughs> looking like a fungus. Okay. So, so yeah, we haven't we we have done swarms once before. Actually, we did it when we did the project. Um, what's that project called with the that we did in the Margate School, the building, the Woolworths building, before it became the Margate no, School. Oh, no. Uh, Superorganism, wasn't it? Was that what we called it? Thousand yeah, students yeah, yeah. and new city uh, students. It was called Apocalypse Now. Apocalypse Now, that one, yeah. Part of that, had a, um, they created loads of creatures. That's gone on to the, it's gone around that bubble, that's interesting. So, isn't what it? is that bubble? Where's that come from? Well, I've got bubbles on, yeah, I didn't okay. get very far with it. But it looks good. I was, going to, I was looking at bubbles because bubbles. Um, they're not particularly a swarm. I can't quite remember how they. I've got a background so colour. Again, so let's have a peek at bubbles. Oh, yeah, okay. You need to give them a background colour of bubbles. Yeah, mine, mine are on, but I think I've changed the colour of them. A birth colour, that's what it is. And I think you do that by pressing C. Yes, yeah, yeah. there it is. So you can see that the bubbles spread big. But when they hit the neighbours, they get they can't spread any further. So in a way, they they separate out to the neighbours' width. So it's it's not quite a swarm, but they are all affecting each other. They're affecting each other's neighbours, and they do that by um, measuring the distance between the different bubbles. Is that visible? Yeah, you can see that easily on the middle screen. And new bubbles can be born to fill the gaps. When a bubble gets too big, it pops and so forth like that. So it's not... Our bubbles are swarm liquid. They're not really, are they? But they are another physical process where everything affects its neighbours. I mean, in most physical processes are like that. Every, the na everything affects its neighbours. It doesn't affect... We're not affecting what's going on in Arlington House at this point in time. They're not affecting us. No, no. But... Um so there, yeah, there, are, there are various pieces, bits and pieces of code reviews which are, do relate to um, swarm-like behaviour. So that's why we're really, really intrigued to kind of focus it, and it's quite a good, it's a good, um, it's a good meaty subject as well. It's got a lot of, um, it's got a lot of metaphorical value or ways of applying swarm theory to the way the world works, like crowds or diseases spreading and so forth like this. Lots of lots of um, relevance. So I'm going to dare I try a bit of music. A bit, a bit of music. Or yes, a bit of tempos for. I was going to put on. Did Julia send anything? Then? No, her uh, oh, the signal was very poor, so no, it no, said it's five, raining today. Five hours. It's up north. Five hours. It said. Five hours to send a audio file. Yeah. Oh. But she said the chocolates are delicious. <laughs> yeah. um, oh my God. So let's have a look. So yeah, we are doing, we will we'll look back on this show once we've recorded it. We'll probably go, keep going for another half hour or so. We may leave the whole show up. We probably most likely will take out excerpts and make a short promotion film for the, for the workshop. Um, we've started promoting already um, 
it sets in about a month's time. It costs hundred pound. It's five weeks. Two um, hours a week. Two hours a week. Seven to nine. And you'll end up with an amazing piece of swarm art, and hopefully we'll put all the different swarms together. Because what happens when a swarm meets a swarm, Nicola? I do not know. Creates a super swarm. Well, they could combine, or they could repel each other, or they could. I'd be really fascinated to see. So that's um, an idea for an a sort of an output that obviously people can do their own thing as well. Um, I mean, I guess that's something nice to think of with things like the um, little sprite making programs that there is a, a, a swarm facility, you know, that when they've created their creature, they could actually say that this creature can swarm so that then you can have little super organisms forming. Yeah. In, you know, not all of them will suddenly want well, to grow. Yeah, things. exactly. I mean, humans, um, say, say sometimes when humans are together in crowds, they will exhibit swarm type behaviour. There'll be sort of paths. Or when people are walking down busy streets, you know, there are paths that flow more easily than other paths. Or, no, what was Whitcomb Point? Yes. 20 stories, two lifts. Yes, I did used to do Whitcomb Point. Yeah. Just imagine what it's like during this time, you know, where people have well, yeah, distancing. Where, where so the chaos of, you know, waiting for a lift and not being able to travel with people and yeah. queues having to form presumably up the stairs and things. So these type of swarms we're looking at are only getting very simple bits of information. Um, how far away is my neighbour, which direction are they going, stuff like that. Well, I suppose the ant, the ant pheromone trail is getting a bit more complicated information. If you follow this path, there might be some food here. Time but humans can get even more com can pass. There's no reason why things in a swarm can't pass more complicated information to each other. Cool. Or is there? <laughs> well, 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 yeah, exactly. I mean, does that become planning then, effectively, doesn't it? But you could say, go go here at five o'clock. I mean, that's that's kind of like flash mobs and stuff like that, isn't it? That is a kind of Swarm behaviour. No central. Well, there is a, no no central control. Very flexible. Can move quickly. But just with a few simple rules. I simple cannot rules. remember the artist's name, but there was a performance event in Covent Garden, probably in the seventies or eighties, where each performer was given maybe two or three rules, and that's what they did. And so then you had this organic shifting constant right? like a fluxus yeah fluxus exactly, performance totally, totally. And it's just the idea that you might have slightly different rules to your neighbor but that there, there would somehow be this evening out of things you know so you could take 10 20 50 people with simple rules wouldn't even need a grid necessarily because it might even be just how many steps you can take to do something I mean, it gets a bit like a production line, isn't it? I mean, you get, you know, everyone's got their own little part that they play yeah. in a, a large-scale operation. Or like an ant nest, there's about yeah. 20 or 30 different jobs. Some of the jobs are, you know, one, bring a leaf, the next one, chop it in half, chop it in quarter. The ants get smaller and smaller until you get a weeny, weeny one. Bivouac ants. They build bridges and stuff like that, yeah. Yeah. Or floating rafts, yeah. I was, I was looking at some um, videos of different structures that ants make. Nicola, would you like a piece of... And hill art. Yes. If I told you they make ant hill art by tipping molten aluminium down an ant's nest. Oh, that sounds awful. Would you still? <laughs> you still they look amazing though. I'm, I'm going to hope the ants have yeah. left. Ants leave nests. Yeah. Um, and they go to go get a new one. I guess as, as they get bigger or whatever, or they get the conditions change, they decide they're going to move to I another place. Someone pouring molten something down Aluminium. a hole doesn't really care about whether anything. But you get this long strands, they're really beautiful imagine. looking objects. I can, I can imagine, but I don't, yeah. I don't like that sort of. Uh, that's just me. Or maybe it's not just me. Anyway, let's have some music. Do you want Very music or do you want swarm, art, swarm noise? Well, yeah, because this is a really meaty subject, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, let's have some music and some anti noise. Swarmy noise. Can okay. you do both together? Possibly, possibly, I don't know. Um, okay.
worms are the things that are going to turn into that's another thing we can talk about actually the spare tire bonfire thing oh, right. oh yeah I've improved them, they're much easier to use now, so oh. you can get pick the colour and so forth like so this. So how do I trigger them now? Um, you need to put your mouse somewhere, like red, click, press C. So I'm choosing the colour again, yeah? Okay, I see them. So I'm going to change the colour. They're, they're, that's their colour, it's not the colour they respond to. No, no, but I'm just changing the colour of the worms. Special speed and all that stuff. Okay, I'm going to put voices from heaven. I'm going to try and respond to the fact that we are really, really lucky to have a lot of them.
a kind of a, qu a choral piece it's um, called stretched in the background and then on top of that there is this um, it's not it's not swarm sound but it is produced by a lot of little particles adapting it from this other program, I just whacked it in the last two days. And to, to make that easier, I um, got rid of a bunch of other code from the, the tide. So you can't really see the tide in action. If I bring my laptop over, you can see on this, on this program.
atmosphere for swarming, isn't it? Yeah, surrounded. Yeah, surrounded. You're right. It's really lens Julia because she can, she's great at creating the, um, the, the part, the elements, yeah. but then she's manually mixing it together, so, yeah. so to figure out a way to automate that and make it interactive yeah. to, the ones, the ones to what, whatever is going on in the space. Yeah. Well Nicola, it's, um, it's, we've done an hour and 40, I think it's all it's brilliant.
some um, Blade Runner type particle system wave pattern with we started ad introducing what we were calling worms but we're going to be adapting these. Nicola do you want to talk about? Yeah so it's a, basically it's going to be like a living fire. Um, on November the 4th, this Wednesday November the 4th, we are doing an event with Spare Tire called Signal Fires Beyond the Shield. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about it, and if you're interested, go to Spare Tire, a theatre company, and um, you'll find out more about it. But it says, an evening of online storytelling created by professional artists and everyday writers as part of Signal Fires, a national festival of touring theatre. And um, it's, uh, we're going to be creating a digital signal file, so some people are actually creating real fires, beacons, and ours is going to be digital. It says, bring your coziest jumper, a cushion or two, coke and a brandy, and be transported, transported to a timeless fireside experience of romance, fury, humour and deceit. Who knows what our storytellers will offer us. Um, as a participatory theatre company, they make experiences including talented professional artists and people exploring their everyday crea creativity. And um, there's actually an opportunity to get involved if you're a storyteller. And it says, we're interested in the story makers for whom COVID has meant shielding um, in the people who were shielding before lockdown and people for whom shielding is a new and ongoing reality. So um, yeah, so it's gonna be held on Zoom and our digital fire will be in sight. Uh, in the space and um, we'll have different people sharing their stories and we'll, man we'll using our webcams, we'll manage to port them into the space, I hope, and then have... Set them on fire? Well, they could be, they might want a few flames on them, but they could at least be sitting by the fire, couldn't they? Yes, I mean, our fire's a bit out of control at the moment, as you can see, it's just little flickering you flames in every direction. You said something really nice about fire, can you remember it? Um, it was to do with it was to do with storytelling, storytelling and how that the one of the oldest human art forms was sitting around a fire telling stories after a day struggling to get food or attacking um, what do they eat? A little pig, I think. Creatures, pigs Asian or whatever. Pig. Yeah. Cave people is we're talking about. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So after a hard day's work scavenging, picking fruit and berries, or um, trying to get meat. They come back to the fire, cook the fire, sit around it, wait for the night's coming in, dangerous, keep warm around the fire, and they tell stories. And the stories help them to create um, community. There was some we thought, well actually, so that's kind of like a pre, an er, and like a, a, um, a, a very early form of um, narrative, Storytelling, but we thought we were oral, 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 yeah. oral storytelling, yeah, or art, art making, I suppose, culture making, making culture. So yeah, we thought well, actually we're not the, we were never that interested in, or well, certainly Nicola was never that interested in narrative as a um, device. We're both fascinated by film and using film to create amazing 
visual experiences, but neither of us are particularly interested in telling a story. So we sort of thought, well, actually, maybe we're more like we're more like the fire, right? We're not the stories. We are the fire. Our art practice is the fire and around which people can gather and generate stories. Yes, they. I mean, that's perfect. We seed it? their imagination yeah. with little bits and pieces. So we we're quite abstract in the way we um, create things. I mean, a fire. As you can see, it can be a little tiny little thing. Well, actually, it looks a bit carroty at the minute, the farm. <laughs> That's the allotment yeah. inspiration. It looks like we're growing some yeah. carrots there. But yeah, I, th I really like that as an idea, yeah, because when I was doing filmmaking, I really struggled because I just thought, I suppose initially I thought I should be somehow telling some sort of story, you know, about the importance of something or maybe telling people what they should think or what have you. And I just thought, I'm really not interested in that, but I really like shadows on a wall <laughs> or, mm. or how, you know, the motion of a vehicle or lights or stuff like that. And that's probably, I don't think it's of any surprise that I went towards, headed towards installation making and immersive experiences because I was perhaps maybe more interested in like um, a ghost train than actually telling a story. I, mean, I love watching films and I really enjoy reading as well. So it's not that I'm against narrative, but I just never saw... It was you didn't have a story my... that you were compelled yeah, to tell. Yeah, someone once cruelly said to me, Nicola, maybe it's because you haven't got a story in you. And they said it with a certain malice, and I remember thinking, hmm. Well, it's always that, there's I always that thing about imagination. I mean, I don't consider I've got a very good imagination. Really? If you, if you have... If you gather ten people together and say, right, use your imagination and come up with something weird to stick in the middle of the park, I would come up with the most boring thing possible or stuff, but, you know, not deliberately, but I, my flight of fancy, imagination, was never very developed, and yet, um, so I've become an, art, an artist. I'm, I'm very good at, we're both very good at creating and placing realising our creative ideas into so maybe physical that, things. So maybe then with that in mind, it's like you are inspired by nature and forces. And yes. So you're, you are simulating those, which is completely valid as an art-making approach. Well, forever and a yeah. day, that's and, what and most I artists... I mean, I know that I can watch that wall behind you quite happily. That could carry on running for a long time. So I think that's absolutely fine. I mean, you could argue that art can't be anything else but simulating nature. There isn't anything else but nature. It's sure. all nature. So then in that respect, you don't need to necessarily invent something or have an incredible, you know, on the spot, I can do this type of thing. It's actually exploring for you more and experimenting more and actually, you know, like the sound that you just played actually coding something using maths and it's not always evident what you're going to result it's going to result in that's what's really exciting as well yes and often that for me that often arrives just through locking bits things together yeah i mean, I'm a programmer all, but i'll just I, tinker i know neither of us can throw a pot look, look, but you might I have can. an ambition pottery, you might have an ambition about what you want your pot to look like so you put the clay <laughs> on the wheel no and jokes. of course it doesn't happen but the really interesting thing about coding is that it's although I know you showed me the video of stop drawing that dead fish or whatever it was, but actually I really like the fact that so much is hidden and then you press play or whatever device you're using and then this thing is revealed to you, you know? Yeah. I mean I was thinking of another one, it's like mathematicians are often terrible at a mental arithmetic. I am. I'm not that I'm a mathematician but any renowned <laughs> rubbish came up. But I do use maps in the programming that we do. We were talking before about vectors and forces and for this um, for swarming. But um, it's quite common that mathematicians are rubbish at adding up. So, and do you, why, what, what's that? Because it just shows you that it's, things are not necessarily about about what you think they're about. Yeah, that's interesting. Maps yeah. is about you know, this, this visualising space and many other things. It's not about adding a boring bunch of numbers up necessarily. It's about finding patterns and manipulating patterns sure. and thinking sure. in abstract but formalised systems sure. and building structures sure. out of these So telling a story bits. doesn't necessarily rely on an incredibly sophisticated vocabulary? But it does 
require imagination, I think. You can't just stand and walk down the street, went to the shops, which I'm going to do in a minute, bought a bottle of beer and came back home and drank it. That's not a very interesting story, is it? Oh, I don't know. It depends on if it's true or not. It depends on if you're talking about the future. <laughs> Time travel, yes. Oh, but didn't you do that yesterday? I did, actually. Um, so... Yeah. That's the spare tyre project, so when is that? That's about a November week or two. The, November the 4th, so it's yeah. the day before fireworks night, and so it's our virtual fire that we're providing as part of an event, and so yeah. check it out on Spare Tire. I'll give you the website, it's sparetire.org, and it's on their What's On uh, page. And, and that's open to anybody, if, yeah, if someone's got a story they want to tell in a uh, write to digital them. Fire, yeah. fire setting, go for that one. So then we've got a little cluster of activities. There's a Millersville one is next week, isn't it? Yeah, on Monday. So is that open to the public or is On YouTube, afterwards? we're running it on YouTube, but the okay. Zoom event is specific. So we're doing a live event with the students. Yeah. It will be recorded, then you can watch it afterward yeah. if yeah. it's um, And then interesting. I think if we're not completely finished, then I think we should try and do one on Wednesday um, because then, you know, Julia will be joining in and it, and it will be a second swarm program. Which day's uh, Millersville? Monday night. Okay, oh that's sooner than I thought. Do I need to do any coding for that one? I don't know. Maybe peripheral stuff? Um, I'm, it's mainly going to be running the world of fashion, uh, sorry, well, the apart from the dongle, I think we've got the audio Sounds great. much more simple, so that's a really yeah. good thing to work well, out. Well it'll be interesting to have a chat with Julia to find out what the quality was like. Although no one was in our Zoom meeting today yeah, obviously. Yeah. Didn't really throw it open. Um, oh, but there are two people watching apparently. So okay, make it. Oh, well, we're just about me. to finish up. Maybe one of them's me. One of you and the other's me. <laughs> no, Julia. Okay. Um, so back to the workshops. Um, no, that's our address. This is the address, themargateschool.com. Can we see that on two? The thing is, I have to keep pressing it. It fades out after a while, but that's cut, which is kind of cute. The MargateSchool.com. Go to their website. There's um, a link on the front page to courses. They have um, they uh, we've we've worked with them before a little bit. We've we've used their space when they first opened up to do the Digital Now Festival. Now Digital. Now Digital. Um, was that last year or the year before? Last year. Last year. So we got on quite well with them, and we were they're starting to offer um series of courses and they have their MA which is um, a, a one year or um, sort of one or two year course I think that one but um, they're also doing short courses so it's are interested in seeing if this works out if there's any interest in these type of things in Margate so as I say it's a five week course for beginners just bring along a laptop we'll teach you how to do how to do basic coding to create generative art bring your drawings alive, animations alive, and then we'll go into swarms, so where lots of particles will start affecting each other to create really interesting uh, emergent effects. And then we'll take it from there, we'll see what the skill level is of people, but we, maybe that we combine these swarms, or we add in some audio. Um, we will be showing possibly how to do live coding. In a future broadcast, we will be looking at a new there's a software to us called P5 Live, which is a live coding version of P5JS, which is the JavaScript version of processing. So there's this family, family of programs that are useful in different environments, either on your lap, local computer, in this room we're running processing, but if you want to run stuff in a browser, you need to use P5JS. If you want to do live coding, you need the live P5 live. So hopefully that could be an interesting show and it's also a great way for me and Nicola to kind of generate sketching ideas mm. in a shared space mm. so you can code in the same, same space. I'm looking forward to getting onto bivalves. <laughs> getting onto bivalves? Yeah. Oh yes. The gaper. The gaper, yes. We have ideas for new creatures. Because, oh, we had some very good news last week. We got our ace 
funding for um, the Microroads COVID Secure project. Um, do you want to talk about that, Nicola? I briefly? do. Yeah. So it's called COVID Secure Microworlds, which I guess is pretty self-explanatory. We make a micro world. We've got a micro world, but we do um, when we run it in museums and galleries. It uses touch screens in, for some of the works. So we applied to the Arts Council to help us experiment and research different technologies to create a hands-free micro world so that it's easier for museums to actually manage and to ensure that it's safe for people to engage with. So we'll be looking at things like more use of Connect, which we've worked with, and certainly microphones, but we're also going to be looking at mobile apps and floor sensors, which neither of us have ever worked with. Um, so we're going to be working with Sean Clark and Matt Nagelston um, because they have expertise in the areas that we don't. And, um, and yeah, our, our completion date will be April, um, but we're going to be starting next month. So, yeah, an opportunity to look at some works that we've already got and reconfigure them to be touch free. So, you interact with them with your body to create animats or swimmers. Um, but we're also be looking at some new creature ideas yeah, as well. Definitely. And one of them certainly will be a gaper and certainly a sea angel, a mechanical sea angel, which Julia's going to be coding, yeah. uh, writing sound for as well. So, yeah, should be... And as we go along, yeah. we'll um, do occasional broadcasts, micro at home, sort of showing anything that comes up that's interesting yeah. to us, and hopefully you. So I think that's it then, Nicola, isn't I it? I think it is. I think okay. it's four minutes two, but why don't we have some music and say goodbye? Oh, is it four minutes two? I'm reading the wrong clock. That one's... It is. That's four that's minutes fine. fast. Okay, let's but, go for um, it. We'll have some music and we will be see you next week. Bye.